Hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about what are all the important metrics that we collect in performance testing. So in fact, uh, there were like more than um, 10 to 12 metrics. I mean, like I would say that there are like more than 15 um, metrics to collect in performance testing. But in this video, we will see the top six metrics which are more critical and we will see how to collect them and like the reason behind collecting them like why should we collect them and what do they really bring value to the reports and uh, you will see more about that uh, about the metrics uh, in this video and uh, uh, this is me awesome shanmukam i welcome you all to our little slide youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet like the video share the video with your friends and please do consider joining our uh, youtube channel so that i can bring you quality content yeah so firstly uh, let me tell you what is performance testing so uh, sorry uh, the metrics and performance testing so we do have several key metrics which are essential to evaluate the performance their stability and the scalability of the application and these metrics uh, they provide insights into how the system behaves under different uh, uh, sorry it's uh, behaves under various conditions and help identify the potential bottlenecks or areas of improvement and that's the reason we do run uh, different uh, uh, cycles of performance testing so the main thing behind uh, running multiple times or to actually run the performance testing is to see how does the system behave under various conditions right and to help identify uh, various bottlenecks or the areas of improvements so uh, let's start with uh, the first few metrics. So in this video, we will see the first few metrics. So on top of all the metrics, the first one, which is very critical, is the response times. So what is a response time? So a response time is the time taken for the system or the, uh, the response or the application to respond to a user request so that is the response time so let me reiterate it again so response time is the time ta time taken for the system to respond to a user request so why should we collect the response time so the response times directly affects the user experience so the shorter the response time it is typically it tells us that it results in high user satisfaction and better usability so we also we always have to look into the response time so as i told you already so the response times are the metric which directly affects the user's experience so shorter the response time it's better the uh, it's higher the user satisfaction so if it goes higher then automatically this satisfaction satisfaction goes down so that's the uh, response time so that's the that's the very first metrics for you and before we uh, move on to the next metric, so let me just, just reiterate it again. So what is the response time? So the response time is the time taken for the system to respond to a user request. And this question might come to you in your interview. So that's the reason I have reiterated it again. And now move on to the second one. Uh, the second uh, metric is the throughput. So the throughput is the number of transactions or requests processed by the system in a given period. So that is the throughput. So what is the importance of collecting the throughput? So this throughput, the metric throughput, indicates the capacity of the system to handle a high volume of transactions, which is crucial for understanding how well the application scales under load. So that is the main um, important of importance of uh, collecting the throughput. And uh, moving on to the third metric. So the third metric here is the error rate. So what is the definition of error rate and why do we need to collect the error rate? So the percentage of failed requests compared to the total number of requests is the error rate. And why do we need to collect the error rate? The higher the error rates indicates that there's a serious issue in the application. So it can be a bug or it can be a stability problem or it can even affect the reliability and user trust. So that is the reason we have to collect the error rate. So you might think that error rate could be a last metric to collect but it's not like that error rate is the top third metric that you have to collect because it tells us the percentage of failed requests compared to the total number of requests and it helps us to it, it actually indicates the serious issues in the application because we all are here to test and to find the issues in the application right so error rate will help us to identify or it will indicate the error rates uh, the serious issues in the application it can be a bugs or it can be a stability problem and it can affect the reliability and the user trust so that is about the error rate 
and moving on to the uh, fourth metric which is the cpu utilization so the percentage of cpu resources used by the application during the test is the cpu utilization so the high cpu utilization signals that there is a potential performance bottleneck or there is some inefficiency in the application code that needs to be addressed to ensure smooth operation so that is the reason we do collect the cpu utilization so let me reiterate it again so the definition of the cpu utilization is the percentage of cpu resources used by the application during the test so that is the cpu utilization and now moving on to the fifth metric so the fifth one is the memory utilization so the amount of ram or the memory used by the application during the test is the memory utilization and why do we need to collect memory utilization so we can ensure that the application uses memory efficiently and it does not suffer from memory leaks which leads to crashes or degraded performance over time and that's the reason we have to collect or we have to keep track of the memory utilization and just to reiterate so the, the amount of ram or the memory used by the application during the test is the memory utilization and then the last one so the final metric is the concurrent users so the number of users simultaneously interacting with the application is the concurrent user so we need to know how many users we do have actually been used in the test so again the number of users simultaneously interacting with the application is the concurrent users and why do we need to collect this as the metric as the sixth top metric and the reason is to measure the system's ability to support multiple users at the same time which are critical for assessing the scalability and robustness of the application under expected and peak usage scenarios so that is the reason we need to collect the concurrent users so again let me reiterate the importance of it so the concurrent users will help us to measure the system's ability to support multiple users at the same time which is critical for assessing the scalability and the robustness of the application under expected and peak usage scenarios so it's overall like to understand how many users the system can handle during a load test or during a scalability or during any of the other performance testing so by, by focusing on these six metrics the performance testers can gain a comprehensive understanding of the system's performance characteristics and identify key areas that need improvement to ensure a high quality user experience so with that i come to an end and we will meet you in our next video until then it's bye bye from us and if you're a little star youtube channel bye bye